Welcome to Extreme Fab. Extreme Fab is a parts application, tagging, and fabrication program that's meant to work in AutoCAD. Uh, these are standard AutoCAD elevations drawn with uh, polylines. No 3D involved. Uh, the purpose of the program is to allow you to apply any manufacturer's parts. Uh, what I have here is some Conair parts. Rapidly uh, to your standard 2D elevations without going into 3 So what I'm going to do first is uh, show you the uh, Extreme Preferences dialog box. Uh, you have your support paths, you have your tagging standards, and Extreme Fab has two uh, tagging standards. Option 1, where your parts represented is represented by a, a letter, uh, such as B. If you had a back member, it would be a B or a cover, a C, whatever you'd want to name it. A number represents the properties of the part, uh, the width, the depth, an angle, uh, finish, color. And the A would represent uh, the length of the part. So if you had a uh, part that was tagged, it would be B2-A. If that part changed, if you had a sill and you had a back member in a sill or a mullion in a sill, uh, that could be a B1. And if your horizontal had a back member, but it was a different back member, then that would be a B2. That one would change to a 2. The A would represent the length, so if you had a mullion that was 24 inches, that would be an A. Uh, if the same mullion was uh, 18 inches, that would be a B. So it is represented by a B2-A or a B1-A. Option 2, uh, the B represents the part or the uh, letter represents the part and the, and the number, if anything changes, that number will change. So there is no uh, third letter representing the length. So it would always be a, uh, a, a B1, B2, B3. So if anything in that part changes, it would change the number. This allows us to set a standard tagging method uh, so that, you know, if we had a lot of parts that were the same, they would be numbered, uh, lettered the same. Okay. Then we go to tagging symbols. This is where you could actually set your tagging symbols that are going to show up in the uh, the EFAB dialog box. Uh, and this is where you actually can uh, get your parts together. If, if you call a vertical, uh, you would call it a V. A sill would be an S, a jam, a J, an H uh, for a head. And here you can just type in what your tag description is and your tag label. Okay, and then you go tag borders. Uh, when it tags, uh, your assembly tag, if you want an ellipse around it or whatever, you would set that here. Okay. Here you can set different machinings. Here you would set your color and your finishes. Here you would set your part descriptions, what you call things like a cover, uh, a pressure plate, a uh, back member or a mullion, whatever you call these. Okay, and then text, whatever layer and textile you want to set these at. Uh, and this is the extreme tag preferences. This is where you'd set all your presettings. So once you set your presettings, uh, you don't have to set them again. Uh, and at this point, we'll uh, begin to apply data. Now we made this, uh, we wanted to make this as simple and as fast as we possibly could. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Extreme Data. And the first thing that's going to pop out is going to say Project Data must be filled out when starting a new, pro uh, new drawing. And we have three levels of tagging. One is Project Level Tagging. And if I put in here just uh, School, this would be the name of my project and my project number. I could put a start date. I can put a fabrication date and a delivery date. And this is what we call a project level tag. And that project level tag will apply to every elevation in the drawing. Once we fill that out, uh, our parts application uh, routine will pop up. The dialog for that will, will pop up. You only have to fill that out once when you first start a drawing. It will automatically ask you for your project uh, level names. Now here in the uh, parts application uh, dialog. What we have here is we have assembly type. Uh, if you have a sill, uh, and these I preset if you remember the sill, the jammer head, uh, an assembly tag. Uh, so if I was to select a sill, it would automatically fill in my assembly tag because I, I preset it. An assembly name, so as you build this assembly, if, uh, if you had an assembly name for this, you could actually put, I'll just call it sill A. So you can actually 
create an assembly and save these assemblies. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just add parts. Uh, we made it very fast to add parts. So I'm going to click down here the Add Part button. Uh, and here I could actually type in a part name. And I'm just going to do an arbitrary uh, part number uh, such as KW-001. This is actually pulling from my preferences that I set up. This is a back member. Uh, say it's a Kynar finish, bronze. If I wanted to apply a machining, I could. And I'll label this B for a part tag of B. Okay, And this part tag is what's going to show up in your tagging here. Uh, I'm going to add another part to my assembly. Uh, we'll say a KW002. And we'll call this a pressure plate. Mill finish. Bronze or aluminum. Part tag, we'll just say PP. Uh, if I had a deduction on this pressure plate, at this point I would just say minus one eighth or whatever that deduction is, and it'll actually make that deduction. And I'll add another part, we'll just say a KW-003. We'll make that a cover, and I'll deduct off of that one sixteenth. And we'll make it a Kynar bronze, and we'll call that a C. Now at this point, I've listed the parts that are in my SIL member. So now I'm going to select my parts on the drawing that is going to attach to this. And I'll select my SILs here. And at that point, I'm going to save my tag data. And now it's going to uh, calculate the tagging sequence. It's going to go through and it's going to actually apply all these parts to that. It's going to pick up the length, the height, the width. And all them parts uh, and all that material has been added to these rectangular SILs. So far, so easy. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart it. Uh, and my next assembly would be a horizontal. So I'm going to add a part. And I'm going to say it's a different back member. So I'll do KW004. And it's a back member. And i got to finish the Kynar. Color bronze. And we're going to call this a back member again. And we're going to do a different pressure plate. Uh, the first one was a perimeter pressure plate. So we'll do KW006, pressure plate, and I could label this perimeter pressure plate if I wanted to. And you don't have to fill this in uh, if you don't want to put a color to this. We'll just call this a P. And then I got the same cover cap. So I'm going to use the same cover. And once you apply that, if you just click, it'll actually fill these in if you want them to. And now I'm going to just select select parts on drawing. And I'm going to select my horizontals. And once again, I'm going to save tag data. And it's going to calculate the tagging sequence. Um, it's going to go through and it's going to figure out all the different tags. And at that point, it's going to apply all the parts. Uh, and here, once again, it's picking up the length, the height. Uh, left turn is like you would be on a saw. It would be a miter. If your saw turned to the left or if your saw turned to the right, left tilt and right tilt would be a compound miter. If your saw tilt turned to the left, uh, or the right to tilt it to get a compound miter. Now that I've applied the tag data to my horizontals uh, on all my parts, I'm going to apply it to my head. <clears throat> same thing, I'm going to pick head, add part, uh, and if I had the same part as my sill, I'll say. And I had the same perimeter pressure plate. And if I had a different part, I could apply a different part. But the whole purpose of this is it allows you to add parts just by typing them in. Real quick light, I'll select my head members here. Save my tag data. <coughs> and once again, it's going to calculate the tagging sequence. It's going to run through, and it's going to tag these parts. And now it's applied my data to my heads. Uh, I'm going to run through and I'm going to uh, do my jams. And I'll do, uh, I'll do a new part for my jams. 007, part description once again, back member, finish. Uh, we'll do Kynar, color bronze. <coughs> And we'll do a perimeter pressure plate. And of 
course the same cover. And because it's a jam, I guess we want to duck from that. And I'm going to select my jams. Now I could do that elevation next to it, but I'm saving that to uh, to show you exactly uh, how easy it is to do the second elevation once you get the first one set. Now I'll do my verticals. And I'll type a new part for that. Why not? And if I had a split million, uh, it would be the same way I could actually add a split million. Uh, so say if I had a, another million here, I could actually add a, we'll call this a split million. We'll add a standard uh, cover cap, or, well, yeah, sorry about that, back member, <clears throat> or a pressure plate, I mean. Then we'll do a standard cover cap. So now we've got four parts on this one here. Now I'm going to select all my verticals, save my tag data, <clears throat> and at that point it's going to write all this to them parts. Now, keep in mind, as it does this, it's actually going through and tagging these parts. Uh, so any parts that are the same, you'll have a B1-A. If you have 63 of the same parts, uh, it would be a B1-A 63 times. And it'll automatically increment. So it searches through the parts and auto-increments all these parts. Now that that's done, I've, I've added all my parts to my elevation. Um, and you'll notice on the... Uh, the parts application tool, I have a remark box. If I want to add some remarks to these parts, I can. Uh, if I want to store my project data files, uh, this will allow you to store them where you want. Um, and then here, this is a match properties, which I'll be showing you next. Clear all parts is if you uh, had a bunch typed in, you could clear all them. Or if you picked an extra row, uh, add part that you didn't want, you could clear last row of parts. And then clear data will clear the data from the entire drawing. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, because I already have an elevation already with the parts applied, the rest of the elevations, I'm just going to match properties. I'm going to select match properties. Uh, first I'm going to do a cell. And I'm going to select match properties. And since I already applied this cell, I'm just going to select that cell, hit enter, and it's going to bring up them parts. And I'm just going to select the parts on my drawing I want to apply this to. So I'm going to select these cells. So once you... Uh, uh, have your parts in, uh, you can just select a part, match properties, it'll pull those parts back in. Now I'm going to uh, save that tag data. And once this is run through, uh, it'll automatically uh, go off and uh, and then we could continue selecting these, uh, the verticals, the horizontals, it would apply the parts to that.